When two immigrant kids on the run from his former South Los Angeles gang leader stumble into his life, John is forced to reconcile with his past in order to try and give them a future. What's going on, Flix Talkers? Welcome back to another movie review, this time for the Netflix film, John Henry, starring Terry Crews and Ludacris. Now, if you think that this film came out of left field, trust me, I got hit with it and I was like, what is this and what is going on? All right, guys, now before I get into my spoiler-free review, I want to give a big shout out to Elliot from Movie Files. Make sure you guys check out his channel in the suggested channels column. He was the one that let me know about this movie. John Henry. I said, what is this all about? I checked out his review and I said, oh my Lord, I have to check this one out. Not only for the fact that I really love Terry Crews in his TV work, in his movie work, more of the comedic aspect, but it was kind of cool seeing him being thrown into this dramatic role, but I get into that in a second. Also, Ludacris was someone that I really enjoyed seeing make that transition from hip hop, which I grew up on in the early 2000s, into the film world. And, uh, you know, with the whole Fast and the Furious, franchise, a couple of other little side projects that he has. But not only that, I saw that it was set in Compton in Los Angeles, and I am very, very close to Los Angeles. I was born in LA, and I've lived in Southern California my whole life. I always love when they showcase movies done well in LA. Once again, done well. Well, so before I get into all of that, guys, I'm going to let you guys know some of my likes and my dislikes for this film, John Henry. Once again, it is streaming on Netflix now, and I believe it's like number four the last time I checked as being watched in the country. So that intrigued me in itself. Now, this film is directed by Will Forbes. I have no clue who he is. I believe this is his second project. This film did get a theatrical release back in January, a very limited, limited run. And like I said before, I believe it only came out a couple of days ago on Netflix exclusively. Now, this film opens up with a lot of VHS quality type of footage from the early 90s where you have John talking with his father, you know, interacting, explaining why he was called John Henry, why he was named that at birth, as well as flashing forward a little bit to John in his younger, maybe early 20 days, you know, hanging around with the wrong crowd. It looked like that gangbanger lifestyle and just kind of some of the situations that they were about to get into just playing with guns or playing dominoes at the house. It was just B-roll footage just to kind of set the tone of like a darker nature film. Now at first it kind of sets you up for this John Henry film of what becomes of this ex-gang member but instead we get thrown into this whole side story of this girl named Berta who we find out was kidnapped by a local drug ring who no longer smuggles drugs. They smuggle women. So we have a whole different situation going on, different characters to worry about. And that's where you get like a mixture of just bad dialogue, bad acting, just all around bad extended scenes that did not even need to be there. It just felt like watching a very, very low budget, B-rated, amateurish film at best, guys. And it was actually pretty laughable that this got bought by Netflix. I don't know what's going on. I feel like Netflix is digging at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to buying products like this. Now, like I said in the synopsis, guys, Bertha, she does make her escape and she does find shelter in John Henry's home. He welcomes her in as well as we get the introduction to his father, BJ, played by Ken Foray. You guys know him from Dawn of the Dead. I got the poster right there. I just don't want to move the camera. Uh, One of my favorite zombie movies of all time, the 1978 version, as well as Rob Zombie's Halloween and a slew of other Rob Zombie films. So it was cool to see him him on the screen I was like yes it's a face I recognize he is a legend and then he started spouting his dialogue and I was like oh my god God, these lines are horrendous. Now, I'm not going to go into any particular order of my likes or my dislikes. I'm just giving out my thoughts, just pouring myself out there after watching John Henry, guys. Once again, it is watching in the comfort of your own home. I can't even imagine this watching this in a theater setting. I'd probably walk out. It was that bad of a movie. And I'm not even at the ludicrous villain part yet. So as you guys can imagine, things go awry and John Henry has to get his revenge. And this 
this is where we get our introduction of hell played by Ludacris. We find out that he's a person that John Henry personally knows. No spoilers, guys, in this review. This movie is totally predictable. In the first like hour, you guys know exactly what's going to happen in this third act. There was no surprise for me there. I'm really trying to find some redeeming qualities for this film. Unfortunately, I can't do it, guys. The ending was ridiculous. A lot of these shootout scenes that were really trying to be action-packed. I guess on an amateur level, it was okay, but it was just not holding my attention. I just kept going back to thinking, this is on Netflix? What is happening? In particular, a scene in the car where these two guys are talking about the human centipede, it was like... Uh, improv night or something. All in all, guys, this was a tough, tough watch. And once again, I love Terry Crews. Ludacris is a pretty decent actor, at least a rapper turned actor in my eyes. But this is one of his worst performances of all time. I remember, I think a month ago, seeing the still that came out for him. And I'll throw it up right here on screen. Yeah, what are you looking at? You're looking at someone that has a blinged out jaw. And I will not go into how he got that, how he obtained that, or why it's blinged out, guys. It is ridiculous. His weapon of choice is ridiculous. It is the lamest concept for something that's going on in the inner city of Compton, California. I can't believe I sat through this once again. So all in all, guys, can you guess my final score? Yes, a 1 out of 5. I haven't given a 1 out of 5 in such a long time. This movie was terrible. I would not recommend it to anybody. You could tell Terry Crews was trying to act in this film as well. There was a lot of weak flashbacks. There was no real emotion or people that you really even cared about. I gotta say, pass up on it completely. I don't know why it's being watched. It has extremely low scores, yet it's number 4 in the country. I guess it's that cringe what is it factor that has everybody just checking out John Henry. All right, guys, have you seen John Henry? Let me know in the comments below. And if you guys did appreciate my review, please give me a thumbs up. It always does help the channel. And make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe and bell notification for more movie and movie news content like this. Thank you guys so much. Till next time, I'm gone. Peace.